like to acknowledge that we're on the unceded territory of the Claydon today, tonight, and we will be starting our service with our opening hymn number 602, Lift High the Cross.
and wash the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done for us. This is the day that Christ gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim this holy sacrifice, be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Let us pray. O God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine, in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 116, verses 1 and 10 to 17. And we'll read it by that verse. I love the Lord. Who has heard the voice of my salvation? I believe, even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress, I said, No one can be trusted. How shall I pay you, O Lord, for all the good things you have done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon your name. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all the people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You may have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord.
1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our gradual hymn is number 60, I Come With Joy. supper, Jesus, knowing that his father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off an outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. 
Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I say, as, as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In this place, let only the truth be spoken, only the truth heard. Please be seated. One by one, Jesus kneels on the floor in front of each disciple. And one by one, the water of his love washes over the feet of each disciple. No one is left out. Peter, Judas, the ones who say nothing, all are washed and all are loved. Tonight's liturgy holds before us a choice like no other liturgy in the church year. That choice is one about vulnerability, intimacy, and love. It is in some ways more challenging, more real, more bodily than many of us are comfortable with. Most days it's pretty easy to come to church we sing, we pray, we receive communion. Then we go to lunch with family and friends. And if you're like me, take a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> we can too easily forget the challenge, the risk, and the vulnerability, and the intimacy of eating the body and blood of another person. Tonight is different. There will be body and blood, but there will also be feet. Maybe tonight, however, is not as different as we think. The risk, the vulnerability, and intimacy of eating his body and blood are the same risk. Humble, self-giving love. Tonight, Jesus offers his life in bread and wine and washing. By his example and command, we are to remove the shoes and socks of one another, receive their feet, their life into our hands, and wash. We are to remove our socks and shoes, place our feet and our lives into the hands of another and be washed. This is the way of Christ, the way of love. It's a choice not just for tonight, but every day and every night, not just in the liturgy, but in the world. Deep, intimate love is, I believe, what attracts and draws some to this liturgy? I wonder, though, if it's also what keeps many others away. It's why some will wash and be washed, and many will not. Tonight, however, isn't simply a choice of whether to wash the feet, but a choice to love or not love. Jesus chose to love. Not some, but all. That's the choice before us. We cannot choose to love only those whom we like, whom we deem deserving, for whom we have good feelings. If we do not love all, then we love none. Love for Jesus is not about feelings and emotions but rather about a choice. In Jesus' teaching, 
If you have feet, you get washed, regardless of who, where those feet have been, where they are going. That's the example and commandment he sets before us and his disciples. The first person the disciples will have to choose to love or not love is Judas, the one who turns away, the one who walks into the night, the one who betrays. That also is our first choice. Every one of us has at least one Judas in our life. Each of us is Judas in someone's life. Sometimes we have been Judas to ourselves. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Who's your Judas? Name her or him and then choose. Choose to wash and love as Jesus has washed and loved you. Amen. Amen. I'll give you a little uh, uh, direction for this section. Uh, there'll be a chair placed here for whoever will have the foot washing. You just want to come up and take off your shoe with one of these uh, chairs in front. Then you can just keep, keep it moving. Uh, and you're welcome to come forward. You're welcome to remain seated. It's entirely up to you. Fellow servants of Christ, on the night before his death, We got two. Sorry. I'll talk slow. On the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly servants. Therefore, I invite you to share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that I may recall whose servant I am, by following the example of my master, but come remembering his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by me for others. For a servant is not greater than his master, <coughs> nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. You know these things, Blessed are you if you do that.
creator and protector of all things. Care for us and deliver all your people from the scourge of COVID-19 and its variants, we pray. Comfort and heal those who suffer from the disease. Protect those who have so far escaped it. Guide and bless scientists and healthcare workers who seek and perfect ways to control it. Give strength and perseverance to all the world as all your people learn to cope with the threat of it. Lord, help us to pray, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, in these days of remembrance of your suffering, we see the need for your help across the whole world. Help us as we pray for Ukraine and all war-torn regions. For the 44 million people in 38 countries who are at risk of sliding into famine. And those are the concerns for the world, which we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you love your whole creation. Help us to pray for those in any kind of sickness or need, naming before you aloud or in the silence of our hearts our special concerns for others and for ourselves. Okay. Garfield Scott. For Emmy Strickland. For Jennifer. Margaret Lidwich. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternity, help us to pray for the departed, especially those who have succumbed to the war or starvation and those others we name now, aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, help us to pray now for any matter, joyous or troubling, on our hearts, those things we can name aloud, and those things we share with you alone. I pray for all those who struggle with addiction, for those who live on the street. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Holy One, we spread this table to remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Accept all we offer you this day. Bind us together in his love, and in the love he has commanded us to bring one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them them to God. God. Let us give thanks to the Creator. It it is is the of all things. We give you thanks and praise, loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows, to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death, and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence, and so now with all creation, we raise our voices to claim the glory of your name. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be 
God, the source of all love. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. Write this commandment in your hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Gave his life and died for us. Yet he's alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.